So for example, 11, we're going to estimate the unconfined compression strength. And this unconfined compression strength is Q sub U. And this is something we discussed when we were talking about triaxial tests. This Q sub U, unconfined compression strength is twice of CU. So we're going to estimate the unconfined compression strength of this clay at a depth of 10 meter. So that's the location where we want to estimate CU. So this OQU. And we're going to use the empirical correlations again. And to use Kempton's relationship from 12.46, in equation 12.61 and 62, are basically that fraction factor, so CU. So that's 12.61, 12.62. And 62 is for that correction factor lambda. So to estimate this, we first need to calculate the overburden pressure. So we need to know what is the, what is that sigma naught prime value. And to do that, we need unit weight. So for this soil profile, one water table is three meters below the surface, and we have three meter of sandy deposit. So this is where that 15.5 number. So that's for the dry unit weight above the groundwater table. And then we have this clay. So that clay, we are given moisture content and specific gravity. So to calculate the C sub that under shear strength, we need to know the overburden pressure at this location. And to do that, we need the unit weight. Okay. So that's why we need to first calculate the unit weight of the clay deposit. And to do that, so let me start a new page. So we are given for the clay deposit. So for the clay deposit, we're given more um, moisture content in specific gravity. So first of all, we need to calculate the saturated unit weight of this clay layer. And to do that, I'm going to just use the um, phase diagram. So we have saturated clay, so it's solid and the water. And this is the weight side, and this is volume side. And to derive this relationship, we know it's a saturated specimen, so there are two phases, and everything is in terms of ratio. So I can assume Vs equals to one. And we know specific gravity 2.68. So you can get the weight side. This is basically Gs gamma water. In moisture content given, so the weight of water is moisture content times weight of solids. And once you know the weight of water, then the volume is weight of water divided by the unit weight of water, which is WGS. So if you're familiar with phase diagram, you can fill out this relatively quickly given this information. Then you can calculate the uh, needed saturated unit weight for clays. So it's gamma saturated for clay. Total weight over total volume. So that's so this is basically 18.95 kilonewton per meter cube. So that's a unit weight, saturated unit weight of clay. Again, this shows the uh, use of phase diagram. So if you don't remember any of the complicated relationships, as long as you know how to use phase diagram and the basic definitions you can calculate saturated unit weight quickly. So once you get this, then the overburden pressure at that 10 meter depth, this is basically three meter of saturated sand plus seven meter of saturated clay. Because the water table, or excuse me, it's not saturated, it's actually dry sand. It's above water table. So it's three meter of dry sand above the groundwater table, and then seven meter of saturated clay below the water table. And for saturated clay, the effective particle stress is Q 
calculated using the buoyant unit weight. And this is SI unit 9.81 kilonewton per meter cube. So that's overburden pressure at depth of 10. Again, three meter of dry sand plus seven meter of saturated clay. And I'm using the buoyant unit weight to get the effective stress. If you plug in numbers, this is 110.48 kilonewton per meter squared. So that's the overburden pressure at 10 meter. Again, this is the vertical effective stress. So once you get the overburden pressure, then you can just use the empirical relationships to get C sub U. So from equation 12.46. So for this equation, this is CU BST. In this PI plus CC index where PI so we're given in this problem, the liquid limit and plastic limit. So this PI is liquid limit minus plastic limit. And for this example, this is given in a problem statement. So this is 60 minus 25, and that's 35. If you plug in PI of 35, then you get C sub U VST. Twenty-six point forty-six kilonewton per meter square. So that is the Andrian shear strength based on that twelve point forty-six relationship. And then we are going to apply. We're going to apply the correction factor. So that lambda term. So from equation twelve point sixty-one. So we're going to apply that correction based on the plasticity index. So C sub u. This is for design, it's lambda times CU VST. This is, that lambda is 1.7 minus 0.45 log of PI. And this is, again, that lambda term. And this is equation 12.62. And then if you substitute CUVST, we calculate from previous step to so the CUVST or CU. So CU is 22.92 kilonewton per meter square. And once you get the Andrian shear strength, then the unconfined compression strength Q sub U is two times CU, 45.2 kilonewton per meter squared. So that's the unconfined compression strength, again, two times CU. That's example 11. Um, again, that's on using empirical relationships to estimate the shear strength parameter of clays.